to take you to the jungle of Borneo in Southeast Asia. Through the dense forest, you see the entrance of a big cave. You climb over the horizontal branches until you reach the entrance of the cave and you peek your head to the entrance. It is dark. Quickly, you turn on your headlight, but the room seems to be empty. But wait, a young man sits on the floor. His head is up, looking towards the ceiling. That is me. I was engaged by the, mo uh, by the ceiling that was slightly moving. But it was, of course, not the ceiling that was moving, but the ceiling was covered with hundreds of bats. Their faces uh, rotated towards me, keeping track of every movement of this weird human that had just entered their cave. I'm quite happy to call myself a bat researcher, and I, I'm fascinated by bats for, quite, for many years now. But probably if you think about bats, you picture vampires that suck blood from humans. Um, the reputation of bats has been blackened by evil stories um, like the gothic novel Dracula. Bats are somewhat mysterious uh, animals that hunt in the, in the dark and emerge when the night falls. It is indeed true that there are vampire bats, but these only represent three species out of the 1,400 species of bats, and they only occur in Central and South America. All the other species of bats have a different diet. Some eat insects, some eat um, fruit or nectar or pollen. Some even eat uh, small amphibians or fish, and some even eat small vertebrates or mammals. But let me tell you about the importance of bats. Bats are really important also for us. They play a vital role in our ecosystem. For example, lots of plants rely on nectar-feeding bats to pollinate their flowers and to spread the seeds. Um, the blue agave, for example, the one that uh, tequila liquor is made from, is only one out of hundreds of tropical plants that, uh, where bat pollination is crucial. Bats also eat insects, so bats can also help farmers by eating away all the annoying bugs um, in order that no toxic pesticides are needed anymore. Also, bats can help by eating insects um, against diseases that are spread by uh, insects, such as malaria. Um, bats represent the second largest group of mammals, only topped out by rodents. They're the only uh, mammals that can fly, and they use echo, uh, echoes of the sounds that they're making with their throat um, to locate and hunt prey in the night. Uh, that is called echolocation. If you look at the present-day bats, we see a lot of shapes and sizes, as you can see here. Um, the one in the lower corner is the bumblebee bat. It's the smallest bat in the world. The one in the middle, the one that looks like a, a dog or a puppy, that is a flying fox. And flying foxes are species that, that are the largest species of bats. The one underneath that one, the Q one in the middle, on the bottom, that one is actually a vampire bat. So that's one that drinks blood. But this species exclusively feeds on blood of birds. There is still a large gap of knowledge when it comes to bats. I told you about bats being the second largest group of mammals, but still they are uh, extremely understudied. Um, if you take a look at the origin of bats, or in other words, what the ancestor is of, of bats, we know little to nothing. And in my field, evolutionary biology, I look into the oldest fossils of bats um, to see what originates all the present day diversity that we see. Fossil bats. The oldest fossil bats uh, are about 52 million years old. And they can be found in 
south, uh, southwest of uh, Wyoming in the United States. And until now, two nominal species have been described based on beautifully preserved skeletons. The first one was described by Jepson in 1966, Iconicterus index. It was named after a claw attached to the index finger. Only recently, in 2008, Simmons and her colleagues described a second species of bat, Onychnictus finei. This bat was larger, had claws on every wing digit, and also exhibits the most primitive characters known of fossils, uh, of bats. Iconictus index is only known by maybe a dozen specimens, and Onychnictus finei is known by only two specimens. So there's not much. If you look at these bats, they already look like bats. And this, these are the oldest bats we have. So if you have questions about um, how does the ancestor look like, or um, when did flight evolve, or when did echolocation evolve, we can't really tell. Um, I was scrolling down on Facebook, uh, and I stumbled upon this picture. I follow, follow some quarry owners, um, and he posted this picture of Icronictus index. And I had my suspicions about this specimen. It looked different than all the other Icronictus index fossils I've seen so far. Um, it was supposed to be uh, um, offered at an auction, but I decided to, uh, contact, to, uh, to um, contact the American Museum of Natural History in New York. And they were convinced of my arguments, and they acquired the specimen for their collection. Um, I, w I flew to New York to describe this species, and I can tell you a little secret. It is indeed a new species, a third species of all the bats in the world. Well, this is it, the new species. It is not yet published, so this is really new, unpublished. I, can also, I, I cannot tell you the name of this new species. It will get a new name, but I can't tell you yet. Um, but I can tell you that this fossil is from the same area and the same age as the other two. Only this fossil that is much, much smaller. Also, if you look at the wing shape and the length of the hind limbs and the foot structure, this bat is com completely different. You can imagine that the fo uh, fossil this different can tell us a, a lot about the evolution of, for example, flight in bats. When I was studying this specimen, I compared a lot of uh, fossils of bats, especially from Icronictus index, the one that we only have a dozen of. And within these fossils, I saw a lot of differences that were previously overlooked. So for the next couple of years, we need to look into these fossils and into these differences. And maybe they can tell us a little bit more about how the common ancestor of bats looked like. It is extremely important for us to know the history of bats. Because I, to I told that bats are quite abundant, but actually, populations are rapidly declining. Thousands of bats, mostly babies, fell out of the trees dead um, because of the um, uh, heat wave in Australia in January this year. A fungus which is causing the white nose syndrome, um, is rapidly spreading across the United States and Canada. And um, it can rapidly kill entire populations of sometimes thousands of individuals uh, over winter. Also, wind turbines cause a lot of damage. They, yearly, they kill lots of bats. And this is, of course, devastating, but also for the ecosystem services. But let me take you back to the cave in Borneo, where I sat on the floor watching those bats. I want to invite you all 
to sit down next to me and admire these wonderful and um, special, extraordinary, precious little animals that can fly. Thank you very much.